Probably Egypt, the Philippines on three. One, two, three. Probably Egypt, the Philippines. Yeah. Tonight, live from the podcast playground at the Airstream Village in the heart of downtown Las Vegas, we present the Downtown Podcast. Starring your host, Mr. Dylan Jorgensen, Jillian Minter, Trey Taliaferri, and music by yours truly, DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. Tonight's guest, Radio show host, Robert and Pamela Rickenbacker. CEO of the Fremont Street Experience, Jeff Victor. Founder of the Kitchen Community, Kimball Musk. And music by Kerfoot and Dow. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the man who thought this was Hairstream Village, not Airstream Village, Mr. Trey Tayaferi. How's everyone doing today? Good, 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 good. Doing great, doing great. Welcome to the Downtown Podcast. Yes. Yeah. As you can tell, we are no longer at the scullery. <laughs> it was taken over by ISIS, and we are so not in that kind of a bar. <laughs> so now we are here at the Airstream Village, right? Yeah. Or as I call it, Rich People Zombie Apocalypse Camp. <laughs> yeah. Look around, look around, everyone. It's, it's wonderful. It's like Walking Dead meet Keeping Up with the Kardashians. <laughs> Never saw it like that, but all right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Roughing it, but fancy. Yeah. Well, good. Style. Good. Yeah. Get this. A hundred-year-old Japanese woman just swam 1,500 meters, and I ate three Hot Pockets and watched the Law & Order Marathon. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, she competed in the 100 to 104 age category or as Dylan calls it, the dating pool. Oh. <laughs> He's still looking. Ever dated a cougar's grandma? Well, oh. yeah. Oh. Sorry, Dylan. <laughs> okay, uh, news, <laughs> news reports state that all erectile dysfunction medication will soon be replaced by a blue light. A blue light, when mixed with a DNA injection, can help men develop an erection as opposed to Viagra, which only helps prolong erections and you guys didn't know you're gonna get that kind of info here <laughs> so actually Roxanne you don't have to put on the red light but you might have to put on the blue light oh, right. Ooh. let's give it up let's for Roxanne <laughs> uh, check this out a, a new type of 3d tattooing has been invented right here right right according to sources it can make a man look like a machine yeah and then my neighbor saw it, he was like, dang it, I should have got that instead of the leopard tattoos. Yeah, that's weird. He's weird. Yeah. He really, he's strange, he never puts his garbage cans away. Oh, that was a good one. Joey's working hard for you. Joey's working hard. All right. Uh, a woman served her husband divorce papers on Facebook. Yeah, that's cool, right? That's what happens when you get married on Snapchat. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you guys can follow us on Snapchat now. You can get pictures like this. Oh, that's not what I wanted you to put up. That was embarrassing. That was only for Kyle. Anyways. Boo. Follow us. I don't care. Finally, a man in, in China who was dating 17 women at once was caught after all the girlfriends went to, the, went to visit him at the hospital when he was involved in a car accident. Now, I didn't know that Tinder had a notify all your matches you've been in a car accident function, but I guess they do now, right? <laughs> well, oh, always yeah. evolving, always evolving. Yeah. yeah. We have a great show for you guys tonight here at the Airstream Village. A little cold, get close to the fire and uh, have some drinks. But first, let's give it up for DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. All right, let's give it up for Trey. Good job. Right. Segment one is completed. Okay. The internet, the world's most amazing tool to stare at adorable cats, like all day. But it doesn't have to be that way, really. Tracky helps you connect, collaborate, and get stuff done. 
It's a social way to organize your personal and professional life. Inspire the people you work with. And inspire yourself to enjoy more of life's little things. And when the work is done, Tracky helps you plan and play. Gather your friends, have some fun. And make sure your plans are awesome. Fun, easy. Nobody needs to worry about bears this time around. A long day and a fun night deserve the thwack of a high five. Welcome to Tracky, the tool where everything and everyone in your life works together in harmony. Connect, collaborate, done. evening is a very accomplished couple, couple, Robert and Pamela Rickenbacker, who have three radio shows, The Mr. R Show, The Classics with Mr. and Mrs. R, and What's Up with Mrs. R. Please help me welcome Mr. and Mrs. R. Come on out. Hi, thank hey, you for being how here. How are you doing? Please hey. have a seat. Hi, how are you? Thank you so much for being here. Do you like our fancy little chairs here? Oh, wow, these, that, these chairs are like <laughs> something I've never seen before. Right? They're, they're fun, cool. aren't they? Oh, yeah. Yes, they're we're scared ready to spin. spin. Yeah. Maybe I don't want to be like, whoa, fall. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple that works together, the question always is, what happened first, the radio show or the marriage? Well, the radio show happened first. Oh, yeah. OK. For him. Ooh. For him. <laughs> <laughs> so explain what you mean by that. Well, actually, he was in radio before I met him, so I say it happened first for him. So, okay. Oh, now. Yeah. So how long did you guys work together? Well, it's been about four years now, and I prayed and said, Lord, please <laughs> let her be able to do radio. Because, you know, when you do radio and entertainment, you guys know it takes a lot of your time. Right. So I was doing radio, and I was like, I didn't want to leave her left out because then, you know, start causing friction. So I said, you know, please let her be able to do it. I said, why don't you do the news? So she started doing the news, fell in love with it, and here is Mrs. Arya. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what? It wasn't really that bad. I tell you what, he was, he was downstairs every night. He was always practicing, and, you know, then he started doing radio a lot. So he thought, hey, you know what? You might get a little bit jealous, but I was going shopping, so I wasn't too jealous. You understand <laughs> what I'm saying? So now that he asked me to do the segment, it was like, mm, I can do that. So it was doing celebrity news. First, it was going to be the weather and all of that. Yeah. And I decided, hey, let's talk about the celebrities. And yeah. that's how it came to. Got it. So you have three different shows. What's yes. the mission of your shows? What's your goal? The goal is to entertain the world. Yes. That's why we have the Mr. R Show. We give unsigned talent a chance to shine worldwide. Mm -hmm. We have the classics with Mr. and Mrs. R, which we both host together. You can't go wrong with the classics, the <laughs> 70s right. and 80s music, you know. And then she has her own show, What's yeah. Up With Mrs. R. And yes. that's how we are. And we come to, we do different topics on What's Up With Mrs. R. It gets kind of confusing sometimes because I also do What's Hot With Mrs. R. So, you know, when you have, you have way too many shows. I can't keep up. <laughs> well, if you listen to the show, my husband always says that I'm the, uh, what is it? The, the, she's just the excitement of it. You know, she's just, she's the icing on the cake of the whole oh, show. Oh, really? Of course, oh, she's yeah. the woman. Yeah, you know, so yeah. I'm just thankful that it worked out. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we also, uh, when we do the classics, we're always dating and stuff on the scene because we work so much, you know, so it's like we don't have the opportunity to get out and do this and just socialize, you know, we're always yeah. working. So, you know, that's our dating game. Yeah. <laughs> and you also try and book some new talent too, right? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. So how do you go about that? How do you choose an artist? Uh, well, I get a lot of music submissions from unsigned artists and I listen to them and the ones that I like, I reach out to them ask them if they'd like to do an interview. But a lot of times they hit me up, ask me if I want to do an interview. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Tell people where they can find your three, maybe four shows. <laughs> well, we're on redpandaradio.com. We're on channel 600. And right now the uh, phone apps are not available, but you have to listen on your computer. Once mm -hmm. you go on there, you'll see an app to download on your computer. And then once you download it, channel 600, you hear a great, wonderful, amazing, beautiful show with me and my beautiful wife. Right. And right now we have over 500,000 listeners. So we're always looking for everybody to listen to us. You know, when we do the classics, it's like 
out of this world. And then when he does hip hop live artists, it's out of this world too. So when you listen to the talk show, I'm always talking about what you're doing, what your mama's doing, what the celebrities are doing. We're <laughs> always talking about everything. So just tune in to, you know, Red Panda Radio. Okay, so. great. And actually, Bonnie has something special for you. Bonnie's going to pop out uh -oh. here. Uh -oh. What we have is a certificate of awesomeness. Okay. Oh. Thank you guys so much for being here and being awesome. So. You know what? Oh, Thank you for having us. Yes, Thank absolutely. All righty. So up next, we have Dylan with the CEO of Fremont Street Experience, Jeff Victor. Stay tuned. All right. Thank you. Don Juan and them. This is for y'all. Remix. Fremont Street Experience. Uh, his role over there is to do a lot of things, but one of them is strategic development, another one is event creation, he's in charge of entertainment, and it goes on and on and on. There are many other things. And the Fremont Street Experience handles over 15 million visitors per year, so that number blew my mind. And I'm excited to talk to him, so put your hands together for Jeff Victor. Come on out. Hey, what up? Nice to have you on, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna switch with you, over here. All right. Okay, so this is the first time in these seats. Very tricky. Oh, you brought a beer and you're sitting in one of the... Somebody back in your green room fed me some beer, so... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how we do it. Um, all right, well, thank you for coming out. Thank you for having me. You wanna rotate it in or is that too much? Uh, no, I'm not gonna Okay, do that. okay. Okay, I understand that. All right, so Fremont Street Experience is an amazingly uh, complicated thing. I mean, you've got this... How much is that TV that you have up there? Well, back in 1995 when it opened, it was about $75 million. Is it the biggest TV in the world? It is, yeah. Okay. About, about five football fields long. Yeah, see, people say that Dallas Cowboys thing is, but we know it's not. So no, 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 no. It's no, not even one here. football field. I think it's great. You guys ever played around with it and put some funny on there? As often as we can, yes. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Okay, so well, I want to talk uh, with your background. So yeah, when I was going to college, I got a summer job at an amusement park, oh, yeah. and that just kind of stuck, and uh, then there were two industries that were colliding, the amusement park industry and the casino industry, and that was happening in Atlantic City at the Tropicana, and I uh, went up there to open this 90,000 square foot thing, and uh, you know, I just needed a job after school, right. and ended up defining a career. Okay, well tell me, how did it lead to what's going on here at Fremont? Oh my gosh, well, you know, there's a path, right? And I'm getting old, so I've been a few places, but I uh, stayed with the casino industry on the entertainment side and uh, ended up uh, being the president of an entertainment company that produced live shows. And uh, somewhere between the amusement park background, live shows, uh, casinos, tourist destinations all around the country, it all led me to, to here, and I've been here about nine years now. That's really cool. Okay, so um, has it grown as much as you wanted? Like, or actually, you know what a good question would be is what happened that didn't get built? Like, was there other things that almost Fremont became? Well, I mean, long before me, yeah, Steve Wynn uh, changed Las Vegas when he built the Mirage, and uh, the gravity was going to shift to the Strip, and uh, largely because of his investment, the neighbors had to keep up, and so he told his neighbors down here because he owned the Golden Nugget that they were going to have to do something uh, together. And he talked about his volcano down on the Strip. And so they came up with their own vol volcano. It ended up being the five football field long TV screen. Yeah. But it started as the Star Trek experience. It ultimately went to the Hilton. It uh, then was the Venetian Canals at one point. Finally, it was going to be the, uh, the uh, 
parade in the sky, the Mardi Gras parade in the sky. They went to the Rio, and last minute they changed to, to this concept, and it's been there ever since. Yeah, that's so interesting. It's fun to imagine what, all the different things it could have been, but it makes sense. You have a digital screen, which can be more versatile. You can put different things up there and kind of change it for the themes. Yeah, software-based, so yeah, we get to change more. the content over the time. Makes sense, makes sense. Um, were you, did you, do you kind of miss the... Mardi Gras theme, though? That would have been pretty fun. Yeah, no, because uh, I've seen it. Uh, okay. <laughs> I think they made the right choice. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, well, tell me some just fun experiences. So tell me about your job. It sounds exciting. Like, do you have a good story to share with us? I don't know if i got a good story, but it is an exciting job. Um, we have about 260 employees. Uh, we do see a, a whole bunch of folks that uh, come down and have a good time. We're a destination inside a destination, and so of the 41 million people that come to Las Vegas, about 35% or so come down to Fremont as part of their visit, and uh, we throw a party every night. Uh, <laughs> if you wanna, if you wanna find somebody that uh, throws a good party, find somebody that likes to go to a party, and yep. and that's why I think I'm you know well suited for my job. Yeah, I like a good party. I can see that. That'd be good. Ooh. Okay, so tell me about, um, for people who are here on Fremont I'm East, not going to attempt people that. Who are, so, <laughs> I didn't know. He's done this before. I'm not going to do that yeah, on no, TV. I haven't done it before, but no, I did no, it fall no, over, no. which is what's important. Um, no, I think I'll just do the beer. Oh, you're getting, you get a lot of pressure. Yeah. <laughs> you want? I'll hold it. All right. No. Oh, you got a lot of pressure. Yeah. No, I'm not going to push it. Yeah. Oh, jeez. You don't know how this, this feels. Oh, oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, well, Kimball, you better be ready, too. All right, so, okay, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Uh, I don't even know what question I was going to ask, but yeah, it know. sounds like a fun thing. Um, all right, well, just tell me something super interesting. Oh, especially for people, like, that are on Fremont East, not uh, visitors to Vegas for a weekend or something like that. Like, what should we know about the future of it, or what can we do to connect with you? Well, I mean, let's just talk about the relationship between Fremont Street and Fremont East. I mean, I live downtown here at the Ogden, right between the two, and uh, like I said, I've been down here nine years. Uh, early in my time here, I met Michael Cornthwaite when the DCR was under construction, yep. and yep. I thought he was out of his mind. I thought I was out of my mind for being here, and uh, we both started talking about, you know, the potential here, and he actually kind of gave me a, a view on the potential of downtown that uh, was important to me. I've lived a, in a lot of cities, and so... When people tell, ask me where are you from, I don't really know how to answer, and yet somehow I fell in love with the idea of developing a downtown core that was, yeah. let's face it, it was fairly defunct, and uh, to see and be part of it growing up into what it is today has been a, a great experience yeah, in my life. It really has been. I w yeah, I would have never thought I was going to live in Vegas either, but it's all these guys, you know? It's a yeah. great place to be yeah, friends. Yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah, give your hands a applause. <laughs> Look at him go. I love it. Yeah, I, would, I never thought that. Okay, um, so you had your own podcast for a little while. You were able to yeah. do some great guests. Tell me about uh, your favorite experience on that. Well, for me, I mean, I'm, you know, I, I, I throw parties, and yet I'm really a business guy. And so to sit in the chair that you're sitting in right right now, it was a real challenge for <laughs> me. Are, yeah, that's a joke in itself. I, had, I yeah. thought it was going to be a no-brainer, yeah. no and then I went through training, and it's very clumsy. What he does is not easy. Yeah. And... Uh, I fumbled my way through about 10 episodes of a, a fun thing, oh, and, did a great job. and the idea fun. was to, to bring the neighborhood together and, and show, show other people outside of the area that downtown collectively was uh, an interesting place, and in particular, we focused on the people behind the stories, and I had a great time doing that, interviewing folks and, and sharing their stories. I learned a lot, and I hope we taught some folks some, yeah, some stuff. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Okay, so last question is, tell me about the future of Fremont, but maybe also, like, what pulls you out of bed every morning? Like, what are you excited to continue tackling over the next five, ten years? As somebody who has a great position and a lot of power, like, what do you hope, hope to see? Well, I don't do mornings very well, so it takes a crane to get me out okay. of bed. <laughs> I don't show up early. Morning people? No, yeah. and if there are morning people out there, I know, you don't know you, yeah. you've got a nice life, but I don't get it. And uh, so, yeah, I get out of bed and uh, go to work. And the nice thing about my job is it's different every single day. Um, and my staff really enjoys that. Uh, we, we've got about 260 employees. Uh, the core group that makes that happen enjoys wearing multiple hats through their day and their week. And the, the hours in the day and the responsibilities to the week are never the same. We throw a lot of special events, and some of them come up last minute. And so it's just a very fun, creative place to be. It's a a great sandbox and uh, what's next I don't know we just opened the the you know 
most uh, highly attended zip line on the planet. Uh, and uh, now that's. You've written it. You wrote, you wrote this Oh, I was the first writer, of course. You were the first writer? Uh, of course. Nobody. Oh. Of course. I always say I'm going after that guy. I'll make yeah, sure he no, makes it. I wouldn't yeah. put anybody else on it until after yeah. I did it. Oh, but it was cool, but there's some pretty cool technology in it, right? I mean, you guys thought up a new way to really create a zip line. Yeah, myself and yeah. some others did have an amusement park background, and so zip lines yeah. are typically in the jungle with, you know, they're tied to trees or something ridiculously dangerous, and so we thought we would actually go the other way if it was going to be that high volume, and so we took roller coaster technology that had been existing for a long time, and we strapped it to a zip line for the first time, and uh, it's extraordinarily uh, efficient and, and, uh, and safe, and we think we could change the industry a little bit worldwide if we taught a lesson, so that'd be cool. you're gonna have a very good time. Someone else can put up that giant Starship Enterprise and zip line off the front, you know? Yeah, we spent That'd the 18 million to make this one happen. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> else can do the next. Okay, well thank you very much for coming good out. We want to give you one of our certificates of oh, awesome. Oh, I get one? All right. Oh yeah, no, you've definitely completed the <laughs> Well, I did the circle. Camera. I mean, I did yeah. that. Yeah, we, do you think he deserves it for that? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Oh, it's a little bit of a box. With this audience, I'm good. So. All right, there you go, Jeff. Well, thank you very thank you much. much. Appreciate I appreciate it. So. it. Good to see you. Last round of applause. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. That's uh, awesome. Thank you. Yep.
Wow. Wow, that was excellent. Good job. Good job. That was, yeah. That was our show, guys. Thank you so much. Make sure to check us out on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, all that stuff, at Downtown Podcast. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>